some sale later. Maybe not on. Um, a few questions for you before we start. I mean, first question is how many of you have a watch? Watch! Not watch! Watch you need to get out Okay, thank you, most volunteers. Thank you, most volunteers, for what they've done for me, because for the last 23 years this has been my profession. Ghosts. I have, well, I haven't told you anything yet, but I have, must tell you before we move on, I am the chosen one. <laughs> I have been put here for a reason, and the reason is to prove what ghosts are. The reality behind ghosts. Right, so that's the first thing. So thank you, most volunteers, because you increase my profile. Uh, it's something the world would get on that show when I did ghost walks and tours and trips and books and DVDs. It was amazing because I mean, it became a phenomenon. We, we got more viewers than The Simpsons. In its heyday, it's not The Simpsons, but it's more important. Um, but, right, okay. I now ask you to go to the public. Because you are, because you're on Ghost Hunters, aren't you? So you are Ghost Hunters, aren't you? Did any of you learn any more about what a ghost was from the film show in the ten years it was on? In other words, can you now explain to me the third man syndrome, what a poltergeist really is, the stone tape theory, what a harbinger of death from watching most of them? No. I yeah. know. Oh, so when I joined on series one, I thought, wow, this is you know, this is gonna be because it was. Then it was a I think it was gonna be forced to be reckoned with. Unfortunately, over the ten years that it was on, it degenerated into Scooby Doo. <laughs> It was a wrong <laughs> cartoon, but when, when adults start acting like that, then it, for me it's time to go. Because, as I say, I, I'm, I'm into the reality behind ghosts, not the scare factor, not the, um, the Scooby Doo side of it. So I had to resign. Um, but of course, not wanting to knock it in any of the new series, has anybody managed to watch one of them at all? It's unbelievable how they've degenerated. And the problem is, uh, I won't get bogged down with most of them, so I'll ask questions at the end, but for me, they didn't understand what it was all about. Um, they didn't understand the ghost business, and all they were bothered about was ratings. Which is fair enough, that's what TV's all about, isn't it, I suppose. But they had something special there, and for me, they ruined it, and it's such a shame. Right, next question, how do you set the skeptics of the bottom of Come on, fellas, you come tonight with a message, you will come on a road. And, uh, yeah, a few ladies as well, yeah. Okay, to, right, okay, to the, to the, um, to the sceptic, no, that's wrong, to the cynic, no proof is possible. To the believer, no proof is necessary. Um, you have to have an open mind, because there is something, I've got lots of phrases for you. So, another one, today's magic <coughs> will be tomorrow's science. Big one. Another phrase, you must remember this tonight especially. Laid to rest. Very important place that you need to remember in this ghost business. Uh, right, how many people here have seen a ghost? Not tonight, but seen a ghost in their life. Keep your hands up, don't drop them. Keep them up. Keep them up. Keep them up. How many people have heard a ghost? How many people have seen a ghost? Ghost. 
you're on a ghost hunt, aren't you? So, okay, when I wrote the book, this is also on sale later, and I didn't know either. What is a ghost? And so I thought, well, I'd better try and explain at the beginning of the book what the word means. Ghost. Come on, anybody got any idea? Do you want a ghost hunt? We're fascinated by ghosts. We'll watch Ghost Planet Paranormal that can be one, two, three, and four, most haunted. This and that and the other and Sixth Sense and the others and, and Ghost and... What's it mean, the word? Anybody? Got any idea? That's what I thought. The world it doesn't know, so I need to find out. <coughs> Oxford English Dictionary. A disembodied spirit or soul of a dead person. Uh -uh. Sorry. Can't find it. The word, Ghost, G-H-O-S-T, <coughs> comes from a proto-Indo-European word well over 3,000 years old, Goiz, G-H-O-I-D-Z. Guess where it means? Well, we haven't got all night, so I'll tell you. To be frightened of. That's it. Goiz, G-H-O-I-D-Z. From that word came the Saxon word Geist, the Middle English word Gost, G-O-S-T, the Old English word gast, G-A-S-T, and when William Caxton came over here in the 1400s from Holland, I believe, the printing press, he spelt, he, he took the Middle English word gost, G-O-S-T, but he spelt it with a, with a silent H. And we got our ghost, just the same as the Flemish word for geese, G-H-W-S-T, which also means that. All of those words come from this proto indo european word, goist. Be fine. Anything that we don't understand, walks through a wall, walks up the stairs, but there's nobody there, throws something off the mantelpiece, moves the pictures, whispers it, we're frightened of it because we don't understand it. Think of the old English word, gas, G H A S T. Have you ever been aghast at something? Have you ever seen something gas? That's it! We're still in the Middle Ages as regards things that move and bump and it's, I'd like to change the name from ghost to energy. Because that's what it is. It's an energy force, source that leaves the body on point of death and goes somewhere. Don't ask me where. I can't tell you that. I don't think it goes up there or down there, but I think it goes either to another spiritual plane, another spiritual level, another dimension, another frequency, another, another vibration. Around where we are, but, but your heaven and hell bit to me doesn't doesn't wash at all. But they go somewhere, right? In my opinion, and this is only me. I'm no expert on it. I'm just a guy that's fascinated by the whole thing and wants to try and prove more about it. I believe that 40 percent of ghosts. I'm going to call them ghosts because that's what we all expect. 40 percent, I believe, to be the spirit and soul of a dead person, an intelligence that is still around for a reason. Now, if you can imagine, we have a thousand years of love, life and death on this side. Can you even begin to imagine how many people have lived, loved and died on this side? Because I can't. So, in other words, is it haunted? Yes, of course it's haunted. How many ghosts are there in this building? I don't know. Three? Seven? Do you realize how many people have actually died here? Do you realize how many people have died on the planet since life started, death started just after life? Well, where are their ghosts? They've gone. Most of them have gone to wherever all good ghosts go to, up there, down there, in the spiritual plane, and on and on. But the ones that are still around are around for a reason. And there are various reasons why they're here. Reason number one, they've got unfinished business. They were murdered and no one found them. They were executed for a crime that they didn't commit. They're still waiting for justice to be done. They can't rest. They're not at rest. Or they haven't been laid to rest. And if they're not laid to rest, where are they? They're abroad. They're around. They're, for want of a better word, tormented soul or spirit that is still around. So we've got those that, oh, lots of people that have got a job that they never finished. It was their passion in life, uh, their hobby, for want of a better word, and they didn't finish it, and so they actually are still around. They haven't moved on. That's reason number one. Reason number two.
still at the end of the day. Youngsters, children, teenagers, they hold their life in front of them. And it's cut up in an instant. Soldiers on battlefields. Here we are in the middle of Worcester. Uh, Christ, I mean, 3,000 Scots killed actually inside and in and around uh, this city. Uh, soldiers blown to pieces, vaporised, uh, blown up. Um, airmen on airfields, young airmen of, of 18 years of age, training pilot, uh, makes them say, and his Spitfire screams into the ground at 350 miles an hour. He, he didn't even get time to blink, never mind, he prepared himself for death. He's vaporised, blown to pieces, and the poor lad spirit actually spends the rest of eternity always walking across the apron of the airfield, always in the same direction, always towards the control tower. For orders, for help. Walks into the control tower, there's weeds growing up the walls, there's no glass in the windows anymore, of course, and there's nobody there. And the, the operations was now empty, but he's walking in going, uh, uh, yeah, I know it's a bad landing, but you know, try and another go. Try, is the war still on? Do, and they actually genuinely don't know. The thing that illustrates that so well is the film goes with Patrick Swayze at the beginning when he gets shot, and he's actually going up to people, getting really angry with them. Because they can't see him. They can't hear him. He's trying to talk to them. Because the poor lad at the beginning actually doesn't know that he's dead. Until whatever it's Elder May tells him, you know, uh, what's the name? Uh, uh, tells him he's dead. And, and, and you know, he's a bit, a bit, get a bit shocked about it. But they actually don't know that. Anybody to do with the RAF? Any connect on that and say No. Right. There is an unwritten law on all Second World War RAF stations in this country. Any RAF personnel that refuses to enter the haunted part of the building, that includes dog handlers, will not be put on a charge. That is an unwritten law. That is how serious the Ministry of Defence, the Royal Air Force, accept the fact that their airfields have got their son. Reality. Um, so that's number two. Number one, they've got unfinished business. Number two, they don't know they're dead. Number three, they like it. They liked it so much that they've stayed behind. Um, the landlord of the local pub, 40 years as landlord of the same pub, best beer in town, doesn't move on. It's his pub, it stays behind. Um, George um, worked in the same factory for 45 years. The same machine, his machine. Never married. He was first in in the morning, last out at night, always volunteered to work weekends. Never married. Two, week, two weeks after his funeral, his mate see George's ghost standing at the machine. It's his machine. So why are you the chip? I could bore you for hours with stories of this. <coughs> uh, this is usually where someone starts to nod, smile, turn to their, their partner, their friends. Uh, the number of houses that have got ghosts in them of people that haven't moved on because it's their house. Because they still like that house. The old lady in the cottage <coughs> spent whole her life in the Brought the kids up. Kids were off hand, she got a bit of money, so she had a new kitchen, bathroom done up, very expensive wallpaper in a bedroom. Her pride and joy. She dies. And move on. Stays behind. A number of calls I get from people that say things to me like, um, I can't understand it, we bought this house two years ago. Lovely now, I've never seen a ghost or anything like that. Recently, <coughs> recently, the last couple of months, this old lady's started appearing in the kids' bedroom. And she doesn't seem happy. Things have been thrown around. And the first question I always ask is, uh, would you be doing any work in the house at the moment? Oh, yeah. Well, we've got builders in at the moment. <coughs> You've got a wall knock now. We're in that awful wallpaper take off the bedroom. Oh. It's her wallpaper. She can't understand why you're knocking the walls down, because it's her house. I, can, I say, people tell me their stories every week about the houses, the number of builders, decorators, plumbers, electricians, carpenters, demolition men. You see ghosts when you're disturbing the building. It's the old lady, the old guy, whoever it is, is still there, still thinks it's their house, living in their own, in their own time, can't understand why you're not in their house now. A fantastic one was told to me a few months ago. Uh, on a ghost walk in Derby, and say, it's my first house, uh, my terraced house in Derby, number 24 Stanley Street, haunted, she said. Um, she said. I knew there was something in it when I bought it. 
but it didn't bother me anything like that. And um, I couldn't afford the mortgage, so I, I, so I took two girlfriends in to, uh, to help pay the rent. And everything was okay until one of the ladies, one of the girls, sorry, started bringing her lap back for the night. I mean, that going on in my house, right? So the two of them in bed, about half past one in the morning, all of a sudden this crescendo of a noise starts up as if someone's throwing the wardrobe around the bedroom. Terrified, put the lights on, sat all the rock in bed. Nothing out of the place, nothing anywhere. Then, in between the two of them, they heard this voice. This used to be my bedroom. <laughs> she said, he was gone. Never <laughs> came back, never saw him again. She said, but it got worse when the same young lady decided to paint the bedroom pink. In other words, and what my bedroom pink you think was happening? She's still there. She's still in the house. And it's a fact. It happens over and over again. So right, we've dealt with that one. Those are that. We've done. What have we done? Uh, unfinished business. Don't know you're dead. Uh, like it here, and then the big one for me is, sorry, right, question for you chaps, have you ever heard of the ghost of a caveman? <coughs> come on guys, come on team, anybody, <coughs> ghost of a caveman, how amazing, I'm not saying there's not, there probably are a few cavemen ghosts around, but there ain't many, so, Prehistory, almost no ghosts. Almost no ghosts. No caveman ghosts. But today, oh yeah, well, not so many, but there's a few. Another question. Have you ever heard of the ghost of a young lad uh, wearing a hoodie, smoking a joint, with his backside hanging out to his jeans, walking through a cat's house wall? Anybody got one? <laughs> okay, so again, there's not many now, actually. But there's a big period, 2,000 years, where there's an awful lot of ghosts. Romans, Saxons... I won't say Vikings, medieval Tudors and Stuarts and Victorians and Edwardians and... <gasps> Stop. So what happened 2,000 years ago that's created some ghosts? What raised its ugly head on this planet 2,000 years ago that created ghosts? Well, actually, we've always had religion. Because, you know, like 4,000 years ago we had paganism. We always run around naked talking to the trees. Don't try it now, it's too late. Uh, <laughs> sort of sort of, it's too common. No, yeah, religion, but a particular sort of religion came on the scene 2,000 years ago. Thank you. Yeah, Christianity came on the scene. Oh dear. The Emperor Constantine, the Roman Emperor, York, his mother was St. Helen, keeper of the cross, a good Christian. He was a pagan, but he realised that mum's religion was forced to be reckoned with, was going somewhere, and he hijacked it. Called it the Roman Church and invented all of the terrors that have kept us under control for the best part of 2,000 years. Ten Commandments, seven deadly sins, four mortal sins, purgatory, judgment day, hellfire, damnation, beals of Baal, the devil, demons, the Antichrist. <gasps> Medieval man was terrified of the afterlife, not of death. Death was common day occurrence. Most people were dead by 40. Um, your kids predeceased, you've been in battles, so you've seen executions. It was the afterlife that was so terribly important to everyone. So you've broken one of the Ten Commandments. You've committed a mortal sin. Where are you going to go? Do not pass go. Go straight to hell and burn in hell fire at 10,000 degrees centigrade. For how long? Eternity, with gnashing of teeth and ripping of flesh and all the terrors of dances in for... Can you imagine what was in this? Because you've got to remember, in the, I mean, when, when the battles were raging here in the 1650s, right, the average amount of information that an ordinary person took in, in their lifetime, we take in in one week. I'm not saying they've got feeble minds, but they haven't got much going on. And so there were three things that were terribly important to people in those days. Go to work, creation of children and the church your religion it meant everything to people and it's created an awful problem so in other words the person that knows full well they're not going to get in through the pearly gates because they committed a sin a crime against God 
doesn't want to burn in her tent after. So basically it's a case of keep very much, I'll stay here. If the old lady can stay here because she likes pink plot wallpaper in a bedroom, I'm sure someone can stay here because they're terrified of burning in her 10,000 degrees centigrade for eternity. It's created a lot of ghosts. Can I prove it? Can I prove any of this? No. I can't get my fingers close to the touching. That's how much proof I've got for you that ghosts exist. None. And I defy anybody in this room to give me any proof at all that ghosts exist. Because I can't. But I can give you one or two little pointers that help her. Suicide. Self-murder, as it was called. The worst crime possible against God. And the olden days, punishable by, here we go again, burning in hell at 10 and degrees centigrade. Right? They knew that the suicide wouldn't be at rest. And so, until 1823, in this country, suicides were not allowed to be buried in a graveyard, in a churchyard, in consecrated now. All suicides in this country were taken to the crossroads. And buried at the crossroads, no coffin, shroud, six foot underground, wooden stake hammered through the heart. That's where your Dracula nonsense comes from, by the way. Hammered it through the heart, into the ground. Guess why? To hold you into the ground. Because they knew that you wouldn't be at rest. Because you weren't going to get in through the pearly gates, you weren't going to burn in hell, so you'd be around. You'd be around. But the stake was to hold you into the ground. And just to make sure, they also placed a big flat stone on your face before they covered you over with soil. That was to stop you in case you got stake out. This is a dead person, by the way, in the grave. So there you are, six foot underground, all the soil's on top, everyone's gone home, there you are. Staking. I am going to get this out first. Dead person. Pull the stake out. Oh, I've got a flat stone on my face. And there's not much room, you know, so you've got to get the flat stone off. And then you ride, because remember it was the body of Christ that rose from the grave. So you rise from the grave and you get out. If you were buried at the crossroads, um, um, you'd be confused and not know which road to take and always remain at the crossroads and never bother anybody in the village. This is fact. This is real. This is, there are crossroad ghosts all over the country. There are still to this day graves of suicides at the crossroads. Fantastic one in Dartmoor called Mary Jay's grave. A um, young lady was made pregnant by the local farmer, um, took herself into the barn and hanged herself. So they buried her at the crossroads, just under Hound Tor, still there to this day. You can visit the grave, people say they see the ghost of Mary Jay standing at the crossroads to this day. They believed it. That's what I'm trying to get through. It's, it was in the psyche of the people in those days. Become ghosts. Um, right, another little bit of proof, tiny bit. There were 222 hanging offences in this country from 1752. You could be hanged for stealing a few sheep, um, poaching a few pheasants. You could also be hanged for murder. So in 1752, they realised that this was very unfair. Guy that pinched a few pheasants to feed the kids, keep them alive, be hanged, <coughs> removing, of course, the um, breadwinner, the kids to starve. But he was hanged. But also, a mass murderer would be hanged. So, in 1752, the church came up with this brilliant idea, had a word with the government, and they passed the Murder Act, which stated that no murderer was allowed to be buried. Ooh, no laid to rest for him or her. But not only were they not allowed to be buried, but they also, on, on death sentence, the judge passed that you'd be hanged by the length until you were dead, and then publicly dissected in the Shire Hall in the <coughs> You were taken back after hanging, laid on a table, publicly dissected, just as we did at school with toads and rats and everything else. Everything removed, your bones boiled to make, and then made into a skeleton and presented to the local infirmary. Most old skeletons in, in hospitals are of hanged people. Um, your skin was taken off, flayed, and tanned in the local tannery and used to buy books telling you of your life and trial. If there was a big enough piece, they'd make a pair of slippers for the mayor out of your skin as a souvenir. But are you ready for this? Punchline. The body wasn't whole. And that meant, on the day of judgment, no physical resurrection for you. And where are you then again? Straight to hell. So they were punishing the murderer. The murderer knew this before they died. 
that they were going to be dissected. This is why even to this day it's still difficult to get body parts, donors for body parts. Because some people still believe that the body should be whole on burial because of the day of judgment. And this was in the psyche of people. Bit of proof there, quickly, especially here, quite interesting. When they chopped the king's head off in 1649, that's Charles I, before they buried King Charles I, guess what they did? Well done, they stitched the king's head back. Why did they stitch the king's head back? Because he was the king. He was God's anointed on this planet. A little God put here by the big guy over there with the beard and the white <coughs> robe. Right? And he was there until he died and then he had his own little throne up there with God. So we wanted to cut the king's head off because he was a traitor. But they didn't want to send the king to, couldn't send the king to hell. So they stitched his head back on. The uh, bill from the surgeon is still preserved in the House of Commons. There's a fantastic painting of the dead king lying on the table with stitch marked all the way around his head and stitched it back. Right, okay, so he's, he's gone. Oliver Cromwell takes over. Then we have the Battle of Worcester and various other things. And eventually, Oliver Cromwell dies. And Charles II comes to the throne. And one of the first, and that's the king's son, of course, one of the first things Charles II did was put all of those people on trial that signed his dad's death warrant and put them on trial for regicide. Regicide isn't killing Reggie. Regicide isn't killing the king. <laughs> those that were found guilty were hanged, drawn and quartered. You know what that means? You know what that entails? That entails, don't you? <laughs> yes. Um, everything removed, head taken off, body into four quarters, quarters taken to different parts of the town so they couldn't come back together because we were sending them to hell. It was all symbolic. But, hang on, Oliver Cromwell was dead. He'd been dead for three years. No matter. They went to Henry VII's chapel in Westminster Abbey, dug up the dead body of Oliver Cromwell, took it to Westminster Hall in London, sat it in a chair, and put it on trial for regicide. They found Oliver Cromwell's three-year-old dead body guilty! of Regicide, took it to Tyburn in London, where that marble <coughs> where the hangings took place, hung it for 24 hours, took down the dead body and chopped his head off. They put his head on a spike on London Bridge and took his body 20 miles away and threw it in a cesspit. <coughs> they thought that there was probably, quite right I think, no time in the spirit world, um, if they chopped his head off quick enough and separated, they might just cash his spirit before he got through the pearly gates and send it to hell. What a load of bollocks. I'm sorry, but, but it's a fact. This is in the psyche of these people. And this is what has created an awful lot of ghosts. I'm sorry. I, I, that's 40%. Call it to the town. Oh my God. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's 40%. And I, to be quite honest with you, I believe that the vast majority of what haunts this building is of the 40%. Because there's another 60% that is totally different. But this building, I think, has an intelligence in it. Okay. Right, the other thing to tell you before we actually go off on our uh, hunting tonight, the profession of a ghost, if it had one, wouldn't be to scare you. Sorry guys, if that's what you've come for. That's not what it's about. They're not there to get you at 3 o'clock in the morning, stood at the foot of the bed, the chains hanging off and going, <laughs> That's Hollywood, that's paranormal activity, 1, 2, 3, 4, that's, that's most wanted, I'm afraid. They're not there for that reason. They're, they're there for a reason. And they're not, they were all once human beings, like you and me. Some of them still think they are human beings. And there's a big word that I must get through to you now during the night. Respect. It means a lot. Because they were once human beings and they need the respect that we would expect. And so any of this nonsense that used to be on most haunted, they start effing and blinding them and yeah, telling them, oh, that. oh, come on, it just... Doesn't. Would you would you talk to somebody if they started swearing at you? No. And neither would the spirit world either. So anyway, back to the script. The other 60% is nothing more than a recording held in the fabric of the building. 
Anybody heard of the stone tape theory? Right, I shall explain it. And I don't think this building has got a lot of recordings in it. I think it's got intelligence in it, spirits and souls. Right, sandstone, limestone, granite, clay, bricks, sand, quartz, crystal, uh, cement, concrete, glass, <coughs> silica, so, so, uh, acetate, tape, it's all made of silica. That's silica. Silica makes up the whole of the Earth's crust. Half the Earth's crust is made up of oxygen, which is negative. The other part, half the Earth's crust is made up of silicon, which is positive. And when the two come together, they create silicon dioxide, SiO2, silica. <coughs> What's your mica chip made of on your computer? What sort of chips are they? Oven chips? Potato <laughs> chips? What sort of chips are they? Come on. Microchips are, what are they made of? <laughs> Silicon chips! Thank you very much! What do they hold? <laughs> Memory, data, information. You can record. <coughs> Hang on a minute, we're halfway there. Right, okay. The red of the sandstone in the Clark Castle, the building, the stately home, the old lady's cottage, the red of the sandstone, uh, the red of the clay in the ground, the red of the bricks, because the bricks are made of clay, the more iron oxide there is in it, which is rust, which is magnetic. Who would have thought 150 years ago that I could get a piece of sticky tape, acetate, silica tape, sprinkled iron oxide particles onto it, and I could record onto it. It's a cassette. It's a videotape. It holds a recording. So does a sandstone building. So does a brick wall. It holds a recording. But hang on a minute. How do I make the recording on the tape? I can't pick a piece of tape up and sing into it. And it holds it. What? How do I make the recording onto the tape? It goes into a machine called a cassette recorder. It goes into a machine called a mini DV player or whatever. And what's in it that makes the recording? Marks. 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 No. Energy. Energy. If you press the red button, the red light comes on, doesn't it? The on button. Because it's got a battery in it. It's energy. Okay, so we know how that energy, electromagnetism, causes all those arrows that go in different directions, all to go in the same direction and hold the recording. But how do we make a recording? in the sandstone building, in the castle, in the set. Where does the energy come from? Us. Each one of us here and out there emits two kilowatts of electricity in a 24 hour period. Wow, little wow, big wow. Oh come on, Do you, each one of you is a two bar electric fire. Not now at this point, but in a 24 hour cycle you emit two kilowatts of electricity. But here's the big one. In time of crisis, you have within you a power reservoir that you can use that harnesses all of that two kilowatts and adrenaline to keep you alive. That is the energy source that causes the recording of you to be held in the fabric of the building. Uh, I'm sure you've heard stories of mothers lifting cars off of children. I mean, I've got two amazing so, and what, what Royal Marine, uh, nine years ago in Afghanistan, a young lad driving a Land Rover was blown up by an IED, uh, roadside bomb. And his Land Rover turned over and rolled down a bank into a stream, upside down. He was still alive, he was severely injured, but he was alive. He was strapped in and he was drowning. Single-handedly, a Royal Marine in the next vehicle jumped out of the vehicle, ran down the bank and pulled the Land Rover <coughs> out of the stream. Yeah, that was in Daily Mirror, it must be true. <laughs> it is true. The lad's still alive and the Royal Marine Sergeant was given an award for saving his life. He can't remember doing it because it's not possible. You know if it was on its wheels, even if it was severely, I could almost imagine it being, but it was upside down. And he just pulled it out of the stream on his own because he had to. Because he summoned that adrenaline and that two kilowatts of electricity, that superhuman power that we've all got that we can use in time of crisis. What's the most critical thing that's ever going to happen to you? Death. Death. 
I don't mean 93 years of age dying in a nursing home. I'm talking about the five ingredients that cause a recorded image haunting, one of a better, in the fabric of a building. Murder, suicide, accidents, battles and executions. The energy that your body is capable of harnessing to keep you alive is the power reservoir, the energy, the battery that causes the recording of you to be held in the fabric of the building. <coughs> Question. Why aren't all ghosts stark naked? That'd be the end of the ghost business, wouldn't it? <laughs> Would it happen? No. Sorry about that. Because they're clothes. Because that's... Okay, how do you have a ghost in my coat? How could it possibly have a... Because that's how I was dressed just before I died. That's why you see the Roman soldiers walking through the wall in, in Treasurer's House in York and the Cavaliers around um, Worcester and, and, and the, the, the Cromwellian soldiers and the policeman that was murdered and, and so on and so forth. Because that's how they were dressed just before they died. They're not an intelligence. They can't interact with you. They just walk through the wall and carry on without saying, oh, no, no, because they're recording. They don't go, oh, when they see you, do they? Then you do, but they just carry on going about their business because they're recording. If I was to drop a screen down here now and play a cowboy film, we're not going to do a ghost film, we're going to watch a cowboy film. John, John Wayne film. <gasps> Would you all flee the building and go, get the exorcist in, and I've just seen the ghost of John Wayne here? <coughs> no, you won't, but it's a recording. Today's magic will be tomorrow's science. We don't understand. It, it's, if what I'm saying is even remotely possible, I'm talking of medieval CCTV. <laughs> Think about it. They're, castles are huge stone tape recorders that hold recordings of tragic and traumatic events. It's, it's possible. Just a quick end bit. Water. How many haunted sites are, are wet or damp? Marshlands, rivers, lakes, ancient wells, underground streams. If I live long enough, my next book is going to be called Toilet Ghosts. <laughs> really? The number of haunted toilets that there are around the planet. And washrooms and shower rooms and kitchens. Are, it's a fight, it's water, it's energy. But the thing is that, that it wasn't always the toilet. It is now. But there are numerous haunted toilets, honestly, around, around, around the globe. Uh, but anyway, water holds memory. Because it's, it's got silica in it. Silica is also a semiconductor, I forgot that bit. So basically, uh, when it rains, the water flows over the mountains and the clay, and it absorbs the silica. So next time you buy a bottle of spring water, which you will be doing after I finish with you tonight, um, you, you, you want to check the silica content on it. The best one over here is Evian water, the French one. The best one on the planet is called is Fiji water, from guess where? Yeah, yeah. Uh, nine pounds a bottle in London restaurants at the moment. It contains more silica than any other spring water. But where am I coming from? Right, just remember something, will you? We are made up of 75% water. <coughs> our hard drive, our memory source, is made up of 85% water. We contain more silica in our bodies than we do iron. But you can't overdose on it. It passes through your body. But the punchline, as we grow older, we don't retain as much silica in our bodies as we did when we were young. And what do we lose? Our marbles. Our memory. They've been experimenting in France for 17 years by adding extra silica into the water of elderly people. And they've reduced the degenerative disease, including Alzheimer's, by 11%. This is fact. This is real. It's memory, recordings. I honestly think that, that I'm on to something. I genuinely, what I'm trying to do is actually produce a rational explanation for this ghost business rather than the Scooby Doo scary monster demons and all the stuff that are going to get us. Because I don't do that sort of, I don't think it's any part of that at all. There is a rational explanation and it's an energy source that leaves the body on point of death and goes somewhere. Any scientists amongst us that will tell me there's no such thing as ghosts? Yes, this morning. Yeah. I spent half an hour on Radio 5 Live this morning with Nicky Campbell. 
arguing about ghosts. Because the uh, Swiss scientists have come up with some new idea that they reckon an awful lot of what we see is it's in our minds. And it is in our minds. It could all be in our minds. The big question for me, is the ghost there or is the ghost there? In your mind. I don't mean, oh, it's all in your mind, but to do it in a way. I mean, it's all in your perception. So, you can all be here now, and only one of you sees a ghost. Now, does that mean that person, we all say you didn't see it, but you did see it because it was in your perception. In other words, we're, you're all here now, every one of you at this moment in time is quite happily sat here listening to Radio 2. And all of a sudden, you start listening to Radio 5 Live. Because the frequencies change, as they used to do with radios when one, one channel used to break into another. Because this is receiver, recorder, transmitter, video player, satellite navigation system, the best computer, not mine, but the best computer ever. <coughs> you, so it's, it's all in your perception. Uh, so there's a thing called thought transference, where they think there's every possibility that we can transfer thoughts from one person to another. Telepathy, for want of a better word. As, as twins do all the time. Uh, and that could also be a Do you know, something like, I think 25% of ghosts are actually alive. They actually pass, like there's a thing called crisis apparitions, where the soldier on the battlefield is thinking of mum, and he appears in front of mum in the middle of the night, and then two days later the telegram comes through that he died in the following yeah. month. Yeah, crisis apparitions. It, this is real, it's fact. Um, just the final, final little bit. I come from Derby, and the most haunted building in Derby is a place called Jacobean House. It's got 14 different ghosts, different ghosts, recorded, recorded or whatever, sightings in the building. So, guess what? It just happens to be the oldest brick built building in Derby. When I was doing Most Haunted, we did I went to California for three weeks. Um, I went to the Whaley House in San Diego, Old Town. It's the, the Holy Grail of haunted houses in California. Got more ghosts in it than any other building in California. Oh yeah? Okay. Mm. As you know, most buildings in California are old. Guess what? The Whaley House just happens to be the oldest brick built building in California. So it's got more recorded sightings in it. And I was doing a pilot three years ago for a TV programme called Battlefield Ghosts because that's my passion. Um, I think they're the most underestimated haunted sites on the planet. And I was on the battlefield of Gettysburg in Pennsylvania with a guide who has written nine books just on the battle, just on the ghosts of Gettysburg. He claims it to be the most haunted battlefield on the planet with well over a thousand sightings of ghosts. That's either blue or grey soldiers, you know, Confederates or Union soldiers on the battlefield. Guess what? The whole of the battlefield of Gettysburg is on a red sandstone platter. And the ghost rests. I think 60% of ghosts are nothing more than a record. Anyway, next time a scientist tells us no such thing as ghosts, this is a guy with a letter his name. And the reason I tell you that is because there's no funding for <coughs> investigation over here, and so there's no such thing as ghosts, obviously. Just quote this to him, really. For the last 400 years, Men with letters after their names, astronomers, could peer into the night sky through their telescopes looking at ghosts. Because by the time the image of that dead star <coughs> reaches the end of his telescope, after it's travelled millions of light years, he's looking at something that no longer exists. A dead star. But there's no such thing as a dead star. Yes, there are. Just, just there are. Some of the just the wrong. Oh, so yeah. Any questions? I'll go off for you. Yes, sir. <coughs> is Derek a core fake? No, no, no. Who is that? We'll go on to that. What was this demonologist all about? Oh, come on. This is Fred Bat. Well, I know, I know Fred Bat. Uh, demon, no such thing as demons. It's church made. It's all in the book. Demon, a demon is a Greek word for a some form of silly spirit. That demons were made up by the church. Right? Because basically, there was good on the planet, and so they had to create evil. And uh, they invented a, a demon, a, 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 what's his name? A devil. Uh, Beelzebub was a Phoenician deity. 
and it wasn't scary enough, so they gave it red, red skin, a, a, a tail, um, and horns, and a, and a fork, and called it the devil. And then there had to be little devil, little demons, uh, that when people were listening to, if people were hearing voices in their ears or something like that, it was a demon whispering in your ear. And you'd be taken out and burned at the stake as a heretic. Of the Sorry, church has got, no, that's not true. I've got nothing against the church. It's man that's the problem, that's corrupted it. And there's demons, no such thing. Don't believe in, don't, there is evil. Of course there is. I don't think for one minute that Hitler is wandering around picking daisies. <laughs> you know, I really don't think he is. But what I'm going to say to you is, when did you last confront an evil person? Other than mother-in-law. <coughs> but genuinely, when were you last in fear of an evil person? Have any of you ever been? No. So that means most people are very nice. Thank you very much. That means that most ghosts are very nice. Because they were once human beings. And they're very nice. Just the occasional, you know, murderers. Yes, there is evil. I know there is. But as regards demons, forget it. There's no such thing. It's church made. Like gargoyles on the side. It's all church. all there to, to terrify medieval man and beyond into the telling them. James I put in the book. Demonology. Demonology. Oh, yeah, he was. <laughs> James I was fascinated <laughs> by witchcraft. Um, torture, um, and, and he wrote this book called Demonology, which of course absolutely opened the floodgates for um, poor old witches. You see, witchcraft, um, no such thing. Any, any witches amongst us? <coughs> no, no. There's no such thing as witchcraft. It's nonsense. It was created by the church for the simple reason that all of a sudden Christianity came and said, well, everyone was pagan. Well, the, 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 the news spread quicker in town than it did in the village. So the people in the village were still pagans, but everyone else was Christian. So we had to get rid of the people in the village, and the old lady in the village that was that laid out the dead and, and helped with childbirth and, and, and uh, put a poultice on your arm if you'd got a wound and helped you with the, if your milk eel wasn't very good, gave you a couple of potions to give the cows. Um, she was the wise one of the village, the wicked. Wicker craft is the, is the craft of the wise. But they were pagans. And so they had to be removed. So the church changed the name from wicker craft to witchcraft. And demonised them. And if she got a cap or a couple of warts on her, on her arm or a thing, then that's where the <coughs> devil was, was suckling. And, oh, come on. And, and they were demonised. And of course it got worse because basically the old lady was a silly old hag that you ripped. You wanted her, that bit of land that she got. She wouldn't sell it here. So all you'd have to do is say she's a witch. And in came Matthew Hopkins or whoever it was, the witch finders. And they got money for it. And it spread like wildfire. And it was to get rid of the pagans. Of the people that didn't conform with the conventional, with the Christian church. And then all of a sudden it started again in the Civil War. And the, 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 but now, of course, everyone was Protestant after Henry VIII took the church. But, of course, the people in the village, the news hadn't spread. So the old guy, the old gal again in the village, they were still Catholics. Well, they had to be removed as well. So the witch craze started again. And, you know, all of the, the um, whatever it is, up, up north, I don't know the name, the Pendle Witches, they were Catholics. That's all it was. And they were demonised as, as witches because we needed to get rid of all the, all the Catholics that were still in the villages. And so it all started again and we hanged them. We didn't burn witches, you know, in this country. We hanged them. Um, the Scots burned witches. But we didn't. Not unless you could prove they were a heretic as well. What are your thoughts on how Christians call the likes of me? We have them 360s on my head and... Oh, well, de it's yeah. demonic. You're, you're, you know, it's all, it's all, it's all. Like in the Bible, obviously, it's got all the <coughs> sort of bad medium shit. Yeah, and, and that was all. Any communication with the spirit world is classed as evil, frowned upon, demonic. Uh, Ouija boards, and we've got lots of Ouija boards here tonight. Nothing wrong with the Ouija board. Well, it's a piece of MDF. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit of MDF with some letters. Oh, demonic! It's, 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 it's 
talking to the dead. It is talking to the dead, but there's absolutely demonised, A, by the church, and B, by Hollywood, with all the films about nasty, horrible things. It's nonsense. It's just another form of communication with the spirit world, and there's absolutely nothing frightening or demonic in it. And, of course, exorcism, worst thing on the planet, because, again, you see, um, bell button candles slamming the Bible shut, ringing the bell, splashing the holy, be gone, evil, demon. And, you know, I mean, these people were terrified of the church. Do you really think that a, a, a priest coming in and splashing his holy water is going to get rid of someone that's terrified of going to hell anyway? You know, they stay behind. It, it's the only thing to do, if you've got a ghost, talk to it. Right? Look, love, I'm, I do it on your own, preferably. Like, look, love, I, I, I hate to tell you this, but we live here now. Uh, I'm paying the mortgage. <laughs> and um, really, I don't mind you staying behind. Stop offering the kids. Yeah. And do you know it works? I mean it, it works. It's, it's that's real. That's often what we've actually, our town in room, we do a lot, quite a few of um, house privacy investigations, yeah. you know, they'll message us and fail us, all this is happening, that's happening. Nine times out of ten, we just go around and have a rattle with the spirits. Exactly. And then they put the messages a week later, it's absolutely <coughs> clear to them, they had a bit of bother with them. No. I said it's just because they wanted you to acknowledge them and say hello. That's right, but of course we're trying. Because we don't understand why the old lady appears in the middle of the bedroom at three o'clock in the morning, sitting in a rocking chair or, or whatever she happens to be doing. But, but you should be more frightened of a living person being in your well, bedroom at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah, but there is, honestly, it's, it's there's nothing to be frightened of. But I have to tell you before we start, mm. I, I am frightened of ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been frightened of ghosts since I was four. How many have you seen? Sorry? How many have you seen? I've only ever seen one ghost in the whole of my life. I've only seen one. Well, definitely one ghost. As in a solid. Oh, a solid. oh boy. Derby Jail, 20 past 3 on a Friday afternoon, broad daylight. Glided past me. But it looked, it looked like Casper. Now, honestly, it was, it, was, it was as if someone had got a sheet over the head. It was that shape. It was grey. And if it was a grey haze, it was distinctly grey. And I saw it, I watched it for about five seconds, not, not colour my eye, and full on, five seconds going back, and I sensed it and saw it. And it frightened me to death. No, it really did. But it didn't do anything, it didn't come to get me. It just carried on past and... and, and about and, his business. And, yeah, about his business, yeah. Um, I've heard a ghost. Um, I've grappled with a ghost. You've grappled? Travelled. I thought you said yeah. Where did you go? Yeah, 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 Dad always wanted to be a soldier as well, but he, was very, he used to come down with me. And I, I also used to organise a, 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 a reenactment in Derby uh, of when Bonnie Prince Charlie came into Derby in 1745 and we had Prince. And I used to borrow uniforms, uh, red uniforms and things, for the, for the, for the reenactment in Derby. And Dad used to come down with me. Every year we'd go down before Christmas, it was a parade before Christmas, wasn't it? and then we'd take them back after Christmas. And Dad died in February. And I postponed taking the uniform back. Now, the guy that used to lend them to me was a guy called Dr. David Chandler, who was head of war studies at the Royal Military Academy of Sanders. Incredible guy in his 70s. <coughs> Friend of ours, we knew he'd come up and stayed, he took part in the reenactments, stayed with my dad, and uh, stayed at our house. Anyway, that was it. So, July, I got a phone call from him. Are we getting these uniforms back, or are you keeping them until next Christmas? I said, no, 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 David, I'll bring them back, I'll bring them back. So anyway, I'll oh, go down. So I drove up, my brother said, I'll go with you. I said, no, no, I'm fine. My wife said, I'll come with you. I said, no, I'm all right. Because obviously Dad used to go with me every year, you see. And so I loaded them up, drove down to Sandhurst, and pulled up at the guard room, as I'd done the year before. And the girl, this was 1992, and it was obviously IRA time still. And the, when we pulled up the year before, Dad had sat there, and he said to me, do you think they've got real bullets in the guns? Of course they've got real bullets in the guns. Well, of course they have, yeah. Anyway, pulled up again, on my own, obviously, this time. The girl, because they're still there, still on guard duty. So I'm thinking, obviously, now, what he'd done last year. And then Dr Chandler came to pick me up, and I had to follow him 
all the way through the camp to his office, about a quarter of a mile through the camp. And we arrived outside his office, we, I, arrived outside his office alone with a car full of uniforms. And he jumped out of his car, Richard, oh, are you on your... I said, sorry, he said, oh, no, sir, that's what I said, I thought Julia would come with you. My wife. And I said, no, 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 just me. Oh, oh come on, let's go in for coffee. And, and I got out, as I was walking towards his, his office, he said, this is so strange, because all the way down, uh, obviously keeping you in the mirror all the way down, and there was a figure in your passenger seat. <laughs> all the way. And I just, obviously... Dad was dead, you see. I, I, my, now my wife's blonde and five foot and a half an inch, and my dad was 83 and very grey. Um, so he couldn't, but he, he did what everyone does, you see. He just. And then he says to me, Goodness me, you don't think it was father, do you? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I moved the books and the coat bottle and everything else off the seat. Just think, but that was. I saw nothing. I didn't sense him, I didn't see him, but. Dr. David John Chandler, head of war studies, saw this figure sitting in my passenger seat through his mirror. And I think it was wonderful, because I think my dad was there. I really did. But the thing is, and I've now decided that, in my opinion, he knew I was trying to go. And when he died, I was frightened of seeing him, which is ridiculous. Because I wasn't frightened of him when he was alive. But I was actually frightened, because my wife would say, yeah, but if goodness, she's not you're not going to appear at the foot of the bed, you know. And of course he didn't. But I'd sometimes wonder if that's why he never has appeared and didn't that day. But appeared for somebody else. Fantastic. Huh? Quite an amazing story. Brilliant. It is. It's, yeah. a, it's a good one. It is. And so real. So real. Um, any more questions? Come on, anybody think about most forms at all? Is David a Derek Corey Faith? I always ask that. But... <laughs> no, I don't think he is. I think he sold his soul to television. Um, he is genuine. We all have that ability. Every one of us on the planet has the ability <coughs> to be whatever a medium is. <laughs> Sorry, okay. to whatever a medium is. Um, but some of us, most of us, will never realise it. Or uh, it's the same way as we all, in my opinion, have the ability to be able to play the piano without reading music. Anybody? Can anybody do that? Yeah. You can play the piano. But you can't, don't read music. So you, yeah, exactly. Right, now I'm now going to say to you, in the same way as the scientists, then says, well, I can't, so you can't. That's right, yeah. Yeah? But the only difference is you can prove it. Because you can... Did you stop that? Right? But if you think about it, I mean, think of Stevie Wonder. He can't even find the piano. <laughs> <laughs> but what he does, he lifts the lid, just put it up, and say, I love you, you can't, come on, come on. But we can all do it. Some people are brilliant at maths. Some people can... <coughs> some people... See, dead people, for want of a better word. And it's, a, and it's an ability that I think we've all got. Most people never know. And Derek's got it, there's no doubt. But in my uh, humble opinion, TV, most haunted, living TV, said, come on, Derek, come on, give me goes, give me goes. I want two in the attic, one in the toilet, one in the bathroom, one in the toilet, one One behind there, and don't ever say there's nothing there. He was told that, and he was paid handsomely to do it. So what you're going to do is there's nothing in the room. I'm going to do Roll around the floor, screen. Roll around the floor, and have, have three, three possessions, two falls, and a knock. So from that point of view, I think that was, yeah, it was not fake, but not the right thing. But it was branded as an entertainment program, of course. It was rebranded after um, off Comptor went to Um Yeah. Um, and then they had to be rebranded as this purely for entertainment purposes. And it was entertaining. It was very entertaining. Very lovely. Wow! I mean, that was a, he's not the brightest button, you know, really. He was ex, ex Liverpool football, you know. He's not the brightest person on the planet. And, and of course, when they started, then they decided that, you see, he became the star of Most Wanted. Love him, hate him, I don't care what. He was the star of Most Wanted. And he made the programme what it was. And everyone said, well, I don't like him, but I must watch it to see what he's going to get up to tonight. <laughs> and so it was good, and it entertained people. But the trouble is, Carl and Yvette didn't want him to be the star of most wanted. They wanted to be the stars of most wanted. And they started to do things to destroy him. 
I can never understand it. Because my, my comment on all of this is again, broke, don't fix it. And it was doing very well, thank you very much. Sorry, they've destroyed it. They've destroyed it. I can't believe that there's actually commissioned a, a, a second series. Mm -hmm. okay. It won't, it's such a shame. But honestly, guys, I swear, there is a, I swear to you, there is a reality behind this, this ghost business. Um, last bit. When I go home, no, I'm not going home, I'm staying in the hotel tonight. Tomorrow, when I drive down my drive, <coughs> Third of a mile long, over the fields, and I get towards my gate, I will go. My gates will open on their own. <laughs> <laughs> what on earth would somebody have thought of that 150 years ago? I've got two ghostly gatekeepers that stand there waiting for people to come home. No, the gates, they must. It must be, must it? What else can it be? It's a remote, it's energy. Today's magic will be tomorrow's science. Trust me. Oh God, it's driving. Oh, come off, I've gone on a bit. Right. I have the same problem, Richard.